Hey everybody, it's Courtney. Today I'm going to be sharing five cards using the Pink and Main September 2019 card kit called Sweater Weather. And this is the first Pink and Main kit that I'm using, so I'm very excited to share the contents with you. You can see that it does come packaged in this box, so none of your cardstock will get bent. It comes with a little card that shows which kit it is, as well as all of the contents in the kit and the color palette. And the kit itself, or the contents of the kit, comes in this nice bag, and it's really sturdy. It has a zipper, so you can keep all of your contents in this bag. And even after you use all of the contents, the bag will be nice to keep to store other materials. So we are going to start off with the cardstock. And this is all eight and a half by 11 cardstock. We have the Lakeside, which this is a textured cardstock. Then we have I believe this is called Rose Garden, and that's a smooth cardstock. Then the Wildflowers, School Bus, and then Vineyard, which is a pretty bright green, which is also textured. Then we have the Brownstone, which is more of a craft cardstock, as well as two pieces of white cardstock. As far as the contents of the kit, we are gonna take a look at that as well. And we have tons and tons and tons of goodies in here that I can't even possibly use them in just five cards. So this, this stuff will last you a long time. So we have a spool of ribbon here that has little leaves on them, it's so pretty. And this is by Doris. Then we have some Baker's twine here and we have both the solid and the striped and this is by Pink and Main. Then we have some other ribbon here. This is, I'm trying to look, um, three yards of brown rickrack. Then we have some tags and we have two different sizes here. We have the larger tags. Oh no, first I'm gonna show you this. We have some sequins. <laughs> this is by Pink and Main as well. And then as far as the tags go, we have two different sizes. The larger tags are the orangish color and the green. And then we have smaller tags, which are more of like a cream color. Then we have some charms by Pink and Mean as well. And there's some leaves in there. There's trees. There's little acorns. They're very, very pretty. Then we have some craft sticker labels, and they're all different shapes. There are two sheets of them. They're great for sentiments. They are, they have adhesive on one side, so all you gotta do is stick it down to your card. Next, we have the stamp set, and you can see we have lots of different sentiments in here for the fall. We have some acorns and leaves. So we have the sweater pattern there. Lots of fun stuff. I love the font on the sentiments. Next, we have a six by six stencil, and this is also by Pink and Main with lots of different shaped leaves here, and we will be using this in a project because you guys know I'm kind of obsessed with stencils lately. We have some white envelopes here, and these are four A2 size white envelopes. And then we have a paper pack, and this is six by six paper pad by Pink and Main. Oh, we also have a little pin there that kind of got stuck in between my paper pad here. So I'm going to open the paper pad and flip, quickly flip through just so that you guys can see the patterns that come in the paper pad. These are double-sided and there are 24 sheets of paper in this paper pad. Lots of fun designs and colors and they are great for the fall. And even other seasons and other occasions as well. Lots of bright colors in here as well as some of those traditional fall colors. So we are going to jump right into the first card and at least complete some of it. I'm gonna be using the stencil here and I have a piece of white cardstock cut down to four and a half, or no, five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm using three different colors of distressed oxides here. I am using wild honey, fossilized amber, and bundled sage. And you can see that I'm just taking the corner of the ink pad and kind of pouncing the 
ink on top of the stencil. And now I should have sprayed the other side of the stencil with pixie spray first, but I didn't, but I highly recommend you do that first. <laughs> then add the ink. Now I'm gonna lay this ink aside up on top of my card panel here, and I'm gonna bring out my texture paste by Ranger. And I just use the white. I use the white for everything because I can make it any color I want. I'm gonna be using my palette knife here. I'm just gonna stir that up a little bit and get the smooth consistency. And here's where I should have used the pixie spray because it's kind of hard to hold down. I have nowhere to really hold the stencil. But I'm kind of just swiping across the texture paste. I'm not going over the same area too many times. I'm letting the colors kind of sit on top or kind of mix in with the texture paste as I'm swiping that down. So you're not going to get a smooth blend. It's going to kind of give you a marbly look. And that's the kind of the look I'm going for because fall leaves are all different colors. So once I was happy with the placement of that, I'm going to go ahead and remove my stencil, clean that off immediately as well as my palette knife. And we're going to set that aside to dry and move on to card number two. So I have a piece of the pattern paper here as well as a white piece of cardstock. I am using the Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 to stamp out all four of the little leaves that come in the stamp set onto my white cardstock. And this is Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock because I'm going to be doing some very, very simple Copic coloring to match my pattern paper that we're going to be using for this card. So I'm going to use a four color blend here and I as always, going to start off with the lightest color just to get the paper saturated a little bit and to map out the darkest areas. I'm not doing any kind of crazy shading or any kind of special technique here. I'm basically just putting the shading on the base, up, uh, base of the leaf and then a little bit up towards the center. And with my darkest color first, and then I will go on to my darkest mid-tone and I'm just going to extend those areas out a little bit further same thing with my lightest mid-tone, and I'm just basically keeping the tips of the leaves and the outer edge of the leaves for that highlight color that we actually started off with. So I'm just going to go ahead and blend out those yellow-green colors together, and then I used my scan and cut to cut these out because I was just feeling a little lazy, but they are definitely easy enough to fussy cut if you choose to do that as well. So next we're gonna go ahead and assemble the card. I am taking a largest stitched rectangle die and the third largest stitched rectangle die, and these are both by Simon Says Stamp. I'm gonna go ahead and use the largest one for the pattern paper, and then that smaller one for just plain white cardstock. I did use my post-it note tape just to stick that down before running that through my Gemini so it doesn't shift around while going through the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and layer the white panel on top of the green panel or the pattern paper. And I planned on just grouping together my leaves and have my sentiment off to the right hand side. So I'm going to use my wet glue. I prefer to use the Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere my largest panel flat down to an A2 size note card and then adhere the white panel right there in the center. And because of the pattern on the pattern paper, it makes it very easy to line up and make sure that your inside panel there is completely straight. So and next we are going to move on to the sentiment and I'm going to take some of the paper or the cardstock from the kit and I'm using the vineyard color and this is a textured cardstock so keep that in mind. I probably should have used my Misty because I didn't get the greatest impression but I'll show you how to fix that going to use my black dye ink by Simon Says Stamp to stamp out the word autumn as well as the word greetings. My greetings didn't come out so well because of the texture. I stamped that again, still had the same result, so it doesn't really matter which one I use <laughs> because I'm going to go ahead and fix that later. I did trim these down into smaller strips, just slightly larger than the sentiments or the words themselves. And then I'm going to kind of place everything down onto my card panel before permanently adhering anything down just to make sure that I'm happy with the placement and happy with the original design that I had in my head. So for the autumn word, I'm going to leave that one side, the left hand side, the way it is because it's going to be completely covered up with the leaves and this will help me with my placement by leaving that longer than I need. I'm going to cut down the greetings and one side 
just cut at an angle just to give it a little added interest. Going to go ahead and bring out my Tombow Mono Multi Glue again to adhere that autumn sentiment strip flat down and then two of the leaves flat down. And then I will bring out my foam tape, pop up the remaining two leaves as well as the greetings sentiment. Then I finally brought out my EK Success journaling pen just to fix up those areas that didn't really stamp well due to the textured cardstock and nobody will ever know the difference. And last to finish off the card, I am going to add a few of the sequins from the kit. I'm just gonna scatter a few of them above and below the sentiment. And I want them all to be the same. So I'm kind of just gonna pour them on my work surface here and kind of pick and choose which ones I want. I am using glossy accents, but there's tons of different adhesives that you can use for sentiments. I like to kind of just squirt a little bit of the glossy accents out first for placement. And then I'll use my little sticky tool or pickup tool here that honestly, it was like $3 on Amazon. I don't have the fancy one, um, but this one works fine. And then I just lay those on top of those little dots of glossy accents. And that is it. That is the card number one. Moving on to card number two, we are going to, being I have these dies out, we are going to use them again. I am going to use the largest stitch rectangle die to cut down this pattern paper. And this is kind of like a diamond pattern in the background. And I'm also going to use one of these cream colored tags from the kit. Going to use one of the sentiments, which honestly, I probably should have chose another one because this one didn't quite fit. A little bit was hanging off, but I'm going with it. I treated the tag with my anti-static tool and I'm using an embossing ink by Simon Says Stamp to stamp out my sentiment. And then I'm going to sprinkle on some gold embossing powder by Ranger and just using a coffee filter here just to catch any remaining embossing powder. That way it makes it a lot easier to just pour back into the jar. Went ahead and heat set that, making sure that my heat gun was heated up before bringing that to the paper. And then I realized I needed a little bit more gold. So I'm going to create a background or an additional background, I guess you could say, right on top of the pattern paper. So I'm using the little acorn stamp that comes from the stamp set. I'm going to treat my card panel here with my anti-static tool again, bringing out my embossing ink again, and I'm just going to stamp this all around. I'm kind of spreading them out because I don't want two of them, too many of them, but I do want a little bit more in the background, especially to bring out that gold. And the great thing about working on a darker colored paper, you can see exactly where you're stamping with embossing ink rather than having it be a mystery. <laughs> so once my stamping was done, I'll go ahead and sprinkle on some more of that gold embossing powder and once again, heat set that. And for especially for a larger panel like this, you will wanna make sure that your heat gun is heated up for about 30 to 45 seconds before bringing that to the paper and that will minimize any warping because we are adding so much heat here. So once that was done, we are gonna go ahead and assemble our card here. I wanted, because I have a little bit of warping, what I find easiest before adhering this down to my card base itself, I'm going to mat this onto another piece of cardstock. And this will give it a little bit more stability and a little bit of a border. So it kind of is a twofer. So I cut down the, what is this called? Brownstone cardstock, which is, like I said, kind of like a craft cardstock. And I just cut that just a little bit larger than my panel itself, but still a little bit smaller than my card base. Going to use my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere my little warped panel here <laughs> to that craft cardstock. And like I said, this will give it a lot more stability when adhering it to your card base so you don't have those little bubbles that sometimes come up and just won't stick down because of the warping. Went ahead and adhered that flat to a cream colored cardstock from my stash to match that tag, just leaving a small border on all four sides. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this Baker's Twine to my tag, and I wanted to use one of these charms, and I'm gonna use the acorn charm, but the opening on this little charm is very, very small. So in order to be able to fit my Baker's Twine through that little hole, I'm gonna add a little bit of my glue to the very tip of my Baker's Twine, and this will kind of get all of those individual threads to stick together, and I'll be able to thread this through that charm a lot easier. 
So I threaded one end of the string through there and then I did the same thing for the other end just adding a little bit of that glue. You can really use any wet glue for this. You just certain glues may take a little bit more time to dry than others. And then I threaded that end through as well. So you'll see that I have one giant loop on one side and I'm going to take my two ends once I actually get this through. Keep in mind your fingers will be a little sticky so it might be, <laughs> might be a little bit more challenging. But once I had that threaded through the charm, I'm going to go ahead and take the two ends of the baker's twine, feed that through the front end of the tag, and then take those two ends through that loop and pull. Then I can just trim off any excess that I have there. I purposely cut that longer because I had a feeling that I was going to have to cut that down. And then finally, I added some foam tape to the back of my tag and popped that directly in the center, kind of off to the side or tilted a little bit, I guess you could say, um, onto my card panel there. And that is it. That is the second card, or I guess you could say third card if you count, count the stencil one. <laughs> Moving on to the next card, we are going to be doing a little bit of stamping or a lot of stamping actually. And for this, I'm using this sweater pattern. I think that's what you'd call it. Sweater pattern stamp from the stamp set. And I'm stamping this with pumpkin pie dye ink by Hero Arts. And I was initially gonna use my Misty, but I found that it was probably just easier to stamp it with an acrylic block, especially being I kind of wanted to move it around a little bit. And I'm just basically going from the bottom of the panel all the way up to the top and stamping that right directly on top of one another, trying to get as close as I possibly can to the one before it. Next, I'm gonna take the next pattern here, and you can see that these are fit nicely into those little openings that you see on the first stamp. And I am using Butter Bar Ink, and this is also by Hero Arts. It's just a little bit lighter and brighter than the pumpkin pie, and I'm just basically lining that up with those little gaps that we have in the first image. And sometimes I didn't do such a great job and I just re-inked my stamp and did it again. And you can't really tell being it's such a light color, it doesn't matter if you stamp it multiple times, you're not gonna get that much darker of an image. So again, worked my way from the bottom all the way up to the top. And you can see here that the top one I messed up as well. I just re-stamped it, no big deal. So once my stamping was done, you can see I have a little bit of a gap on the bottom and the top of the card panel. So I'm just gonna trim this down a teeny tiny bit. I took a little bit off the top and the bottom and just to make it even or symmetrical, I guess, I took a little bit off the side as well. And then I'm going to use my wet glue to adhere this down to a white A2 size note card. So I have just a teeny tiny bit of a border on all four sides. Next for my sentiment, I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp this right down in the center of my card panel here. And I'm going to bring out my Misty just because I want to make sure that I stamp this twice so that you can actually see the sentiment over that pattern that we created. So I'm using that Simon Says Stamp black dye ink once again. And like I said, I did stamp this twice just to make sure I have a very bold black outline of my sentiment so you can really see that pop. Next, gonna go ahead and finish this off with a few more of those sequins from the kit. And again, using my glossy accents to kind of place some dots around my card panel where I'm gonna want my sequins. Once I have those stuck down, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the glossy accents right in the center of the sequins to make sure that they don't shift around when I mail it. So that is it for that one. Moving on to the next card. And we're gonna be doing some ink blending and some Copic coloring. So I'm gonna take some post-it note tape and I'm using my grid mat just to make sure that it is nice and straight. You see the first piece wasn't big enough <laughs> or long enough anyway. And just making sure that I'm putting those right next to each other and this will kind of leave a gap in my card panel which is where I will ultimately do my stamping. So I'm going to use the same three colors of Distress Oxides that I used for the stencil one because I have them sitting on my desk and they're perfect fall colors. Going to be using two different blending brushes here, starting off with the Wild Honey on top, making sure that I get that skinny little strip off to the left-hand side as well. Moving on to the Fossilized Amber, and I'm using the same brush here because these are kind of the same color family. 
I just kind of wipe off my brush on my scrap piece of paper, get most of that wild honey off before moving on to the fossilized amber. I am using a separate brush for the bundled sage on the bottom. Once I reach the bottom, I'm gonna work my way back up. So you can see the first time around or when I worked my way down, I wasn't worried about getting a perfect blend. I was just getting my color down. Once I reach the bottom, I'll work my way back up, kind of going back and forth from one color to the next, just making sure each one of these colors blend with the color that's next to it on both sides of my card panel. I'm gonna go ahead and carefully remove my post-it note tape once I'm happy with the blending, and you will wanna make sure that your card panel is dry before moving on to the next step. So I did let this dry for probably about 15 minutes. The Distress Oxides tend to lay on top of the paper rather than seeping in it, so they do take a little bit of time. Once that was dry, I'm gonna take some more post-it note tape and mask out or mask off the sides of that little blank strip that we have there in the center for our stamping. And I'm going to be using the leaves as well as the acorn that come in the stamp set, stamping these out with Blackout Ink by Ink on 3. You can certainly stamp these directly over top of one another and do some masking. I just didn't feel like doing any masking. So I wanna concentrate the leaves and the acorns being a little bit closer together on top of the panel and then further apart as they fall. So it makes it look as if the leaves are kind of falling. So I'm stamping very, very close to one another towards the top, just making sure that I don't actually overlap the images. Again, this is where masking would probably be best. I just didn't feel like doing it. <laughs> so once my stamping was complete, we are going to move on to the Copic coloring. And I'm just gonna show you a little bit of this because again, I kept this pretty simple and it's pretty much the same for the for all of the images. So for the first leaf, I'm gonna go right in with my darkest color, which is the YR27. Just add a little bit of shading to the base and the tip of the leaf, as well as the little, where it's indented in a little bit. Blending that out with the YR24, extending those areas out a little bit further, and then I'll finish off with the Y23 and just get those colors to blend. For the acorn, I am going to be using some E50 markers. Again, this is a small area, so I'm gonna go right in with my darkest color. I'm not really concentrating on the coloring being great. So I'm just adding a little bit of shading on either side of the acorn because this would be a round object. Your highlight would be in the center. Blended that out with the E57, then the E55, and then I'll finish off with my highlight color, which is the E53. Now I did want a little bit of a variation within the leaves. So for this one, I'm gonna use the same color combination as I did for the first, but I'm bringing in the R56 for the base and the tip of the leaf. Then I'll blend that out with the same three colors that I used for that first leaf. That way there's gonna be a little bit of a variation and not every single leaf will be exactly the same. So I went ahead and finished coloring up all of those leaves as well as the acorns. And then I wanted, I didn't wanna leave the background of this little area completely white. So I'm gonna take some YG markers and I'm going to fill in the entire area. Just being careful to go around my images. If you happen to go over them a little bit, it's not the end of the world. There would naturally be some green in those leaves anyway, so it wouldn't be a big deal. Now this is a larger area to cover up. So keep in mind that when you're using alcohol markers of any kind, whether you're using Copics or Artezas or Spectrum Noirs, you may see some streaking when you're filling in larger areas. In order to get rid of this, I just go over those larger areas twice. So I don't necessarily go right next to the image each and every time. Once I have the main area filled in, I just go over those streaky areas more than once and it pretty much will eliminate the streaks. You may see one or two, but honestly, I'm okay with that. So I went ahead and finished that up, and then I wanted to create a little bit of a border. There was no, it just didn't pop the way I wanted it to. So I'm gonna bring out my T-square ruler. Sorry, couldn't think of the name of it. And an EK Success journaling pen. You will wanna make sure that you're using a Copic Safe pen, being we are gonna be going over the area that we use Copic markers and you don't want the color to bleed. So I'm just going to create a border with this Copic Safe pen to make this area where we had our Copic coloring really pop from the rest of the card. 
we are going to finish off the card using one of the sentiments from the stamp set and i'm using versafine onyx black ink for this one just because i don't like to stamp dye ink over dye ink because sometimes it does tend to not be such a crisp image so once that was done we are going to go ahead and finish up the card that we had started with the stencil oh i did add a little bit of sparkle with a nouveau aqua shimmer pen of course so for the stencil one we are all we're really going to do is layer this and add a sentiment we're going to keep it nice and simple so i ended up cutting down this panel a little bit on all four sides you will notice when you use texture paste some of the edges on your card panel may be a little messy you can always trim these off with scissors but in this case i'm trimming down the entire panel anyway i'm also going to take a piece of the school bus cardstock and cut that just a little bit larger than my card panel but a little bit smaller than the card base itself like always gluing everything together with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue, leaving that white border around my card panel there. Going to take this extra piece of this card stock to create my sentiment. Going to treat that with my anti-static tool, stamp out my sentiment with Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink, great for embossing. And you'll see that I switch back and forth. I use the Simon Says Stamp sometimes, I use the Versamark sometimes, whatever's within an arm's reach, that's pretty much what I use going to sprinkle on some hero arts white embossing powder on this and go ahead and heat set this once again making sure that heat gun is completely heated up last i'm going to go ahead and take out my tonic paper trimmer here and just trim this the sentiment down so that it's just a little bit larger than the sentiment i don't want to cover up too much of my background and i'm just kind of using the words as my guide to make sure that it is completely straight going to use some foam tape to pop this up right in the center of my card panel and that is it and here is a quick look at all five of the cards that we've created today as always i will leave a list of supplies in the description box below thank you guys so much for stopping by and have a great day bye